Summary of the House of the Scorpion by Nancy Farmer In the future country of opium, a scientist makes a clone from the cells of the strong drug lord Matteo El Patron Alacrin. The clone, whose name is Matt, spends the first six years of his life hidden away in a house in a poppy field with his loving guardian, Celia. Matt's small, safe world changes all of a sudden when three children, Stephen, Emilia, and Mara, find him and take him to a big house on the other side of the fields. When a guy named Mr. Alacrin shows up at the house, he is angry and disgusted by Matt. Matt is all of a sudden locked in a room with the mean maid Rosa and the cold Dr. Willem. Matt lives there in filth until Celia and Mara come and save him. Matt meets El Patron, the head of the Alacrin family and the mansion's owner. Matt and El Patron get along right away, and El Patron says that Matt will go to school and will never be hurt again. Matt, Celia, and Tam Lin, who is his bodyguard, all live in the house. Tam Lin takes Matt to the lake just past the estate and teaches him how to survive in the wild. He also talks to Matt about how people can change who they are by deciding to do what is right and good. He also tells Matt about the Egypts, who have computer chips in their heads and can only do simple things like follow simple orders. Except for Maria, who is kind, and Tom, who is bad, none of the other workers or family members pay attention to Matt. Matt doesn't know why, but he starts to understand that the fact that he is a clone is making everyone dislike him. Matt does well in school and learns to play lovely music. Even though he is a clone, he hopes that one day his achievements will change how people see him. At El Patron's birthday party, Matt asks Mara to kiss him in front of everyone to show that he deserves better than to be treated like an animal. Mara is mad at him for being mean to her. Later, Tom tricks Matt and Maria into thinking they are seeing another clone, this one with its brain destroyed. Mara is shocked and stops talking to Matt. Mara's pet dog is hidden by Matt so that she will have to go find it and talk to him. The dog dies, and Matt gets the blame. After what happened, both Mara and Tam Lin leave Matt at the house by himself. Matt and Mara see each other again at the funeral of El Viejo, the grandson of El Patron. They find out that Tom's mother, Felicia, killed Maria's dog to make Matt look bad. Before she goes back to school, Mara forgives Matt and makes him promise to live a good life. Matt keeps looking around the house and the area around it. Agents from the farm patrol tell him that Tam Lin is a former terrorist who killed 20 children in a bombing by mistake. El Patron has a heart attack late one night, and Matt is rushed to the hospital. Matt, on the other hand, suddenly gets sick and passes out. El Patron will be alive when he wakes up because he got a new heart. Matt starts to grow up and become a man. He meets up with Tam Lin again, but both she and Celia's private behavior confuses and angers him. He starts to think about everything he has ever heard about clones, and he realizes that in opium, clones are made for organ donations. He thinks El Patron couldn't want to kill him for his parts because El Patron gave him a good education and a comfortable life. Stephen and Amelia's wedding takes place at the house, and the whole Alacrin family is there. El Patron has another heart attack, and even though Mara tried to help him get away, Matt is caught and taken to the hospital to give El Patron his heart. Celia says that she has been poisoning Matt to keep him from giving organs. El Patron dies. Mr. Alacrin tells Tam Lin to kill Matt, but Tam Lin helps Matt escape over the Aslan Mountains instead. Matt is taken care of by the keepers in Aztlan. These are men who are in charge of the lost boys, who are the children of people who were caught by farm patrol trying to cross the border into opium. The keepers run a false, communal system, so Matt and the other lost boys Chacho, Fidelito, and Tun Tun try to escape with Chacho, Fidelito, and Tun Tun. They find Mara and her active mother, Esperanza, at Mara's school, a convent. Matt is told by Esperanza that opium has been locked down since El Patron died, and that only El Patron's DNA can turn off the security system. She tells Matt that not only must he be the one to open up opium again, but he is also the true boss of opium because he is the genetic copy of El Patron. 
Matt goes back to Opium with the plan to take over as boss and make up for what El Patron did. He learns that Celia and a few other maids are the only ones still living. El Patron saved a bottle of special wine for his family and staff to drink at his funeral before he died. He put poison in the wine, which killed everyone and stopped Opium from going on after he died. Tam Lin knew about this plan, but he still drank the wine to make up for killing the students. Matt is upset that Tam Lin left him, and he doesn't know how to start the hard work of making up for the wrongs done by El Patron. But he knows he still has people who can help him, like Mara, Celia, and the Lost Boys. About the author Nancy Farmer grew up in Arizona, close to the border between the U.S. and Mexico. She helped her parents run a hotel where fugitives often stayed. Before she joined the Peace Corps in India in the early 1960s, she went to Reed's College in Portland, Oregon. After that, she went to UC Berkeley to study chemistry. In the 1970s, she took her unusual knowledge of how diseases are spread by insects to Mozambique and Zimbabwe, where she used pest control to stop the spread of deadly diseases. At the University of Zimbabwe, she met Harold Farmer, who would become her husband. At age 40, when she was pregnant and couldn't work in the field, Nancy Farmer started writing. She first put out books in Zimbabwe. Her first book in the United States, Do You Know Me?, came out in 1993. Since then, three Newbery Medals and one National Book Award have been given to her books for kids and teens. Farmer and her husband live with their son Daniel in the Chiricahua Mountains of Arizona. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.